Yeah. Yeah. Hey now. All right. Hey now. We are here. Hey now. We're going to recap week four of the NFL. The noon games were great, I thought. The afternoon games, a little bit of a letdown. And then the Sunday night game was a classic. I consider it to be so. It was better than advertised. Belichick versus Brady in a monsoon. I love the fact that it was raining. That like, As soon as I saw that was part of it, I was – I just knew it was. I, it had the feeling, all the makings of being a great game, with the weather and involved. I think that helped the fucking Bucks too, man, or the uh, Patriots. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brady was hitting the passes he normally would, but mm-hmm. uh, um, see, Belichick's tongue was a topic of conversation. Yeah, uh, well, that's, yeah. if you're gonna bring it up, let's get right to that because that dude is a fucking maniac dude, dude. Like, I love like gruden has some strange faces on the sideline but yeah that but, dude yeah was incredible he, i was i was kind of curious like what bill might say to him like today or sometime this week like you know it's funny you bring that up because yeah. i don't know if you guys caught bill did something like equally fucking weird during the game you know because we're talking with the bell check the sun he was doing like the weird lizard tongue thing yeah. right okay bill at one point <laughs> yeah you can see him poking around with, with his tongue on his teeth. Yeah. Takes his pencil out, uses his Picks pencil as a, as a tooth. toothpick, oh. then looks at the tip of the pencil and then puts it back. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, no wonder he's year? fucking weird. I, I didn't know where yeah. to put it back, but it's like, hey, it, it, can't get he didn't throw it away. Shit. He didn't dispose of it. Oh, of course yeah. not. But the fact that but, not only you use the pencil, but then you admire your – it's like catching somebody picking a booger and then looking at it. It's like, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, like if – but going back to, like, maybe Bill's thoughts on the Steve Belichick tongue exercises, if, like, this week or even today, like, Bill goes to son Steve and is like, he's like, you know, Steve, hmm. called it, call it a good defensive game. But you know, just just keep your fucking tongue in your mouth. Yeah, well, let's, let's move on to next week. <laughs> I had to have a couple of questions about your tongue, and I spent a little more time on it than I would have liked to have. Yep. I'm gonna chop it off if I see one more tongue come out of your mouth next yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, dude. I that was fucking weird because it, you knew when it was happening. You're like, what the hell? What was that? You knew everybody was. Oh, but he was. Say it it wasn't a one-time like, thing either. That's like what he I mean, knew. But it yeah. was like, yeah, it was like. But there Every was play. one that was really like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, well, like, I think it was once I saw he's doing it like every big third down or when, whenever it was, it was like they almost had like a camera just dedicated to him. Like, oh, God, he's really good. Yeah, we got to see the next. <laughs> well, and with that hair, like anyone like that's related to Belichick that shows somewhat of a, of a personality, you got to want to see more because it's like, ah, no way. Like you can be like the hair dude. He's a goofball, man. He might make for a hell of a coach, dude. I don't know. Or, he'll he'll get a gig someday. He yeah, he'll I look forward to seeing Hollywood it. villain. He'll probably just take movie. over for Bill. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, too, McDaniel's yeah. has got to be first in line. Yeah, I would think. True. And then they hire him as a coordinator. Well, I think he hopes. Yeah. Yeah, McDaniel hopes that's the case. Yeah, that's why he's still there, right? Because <laughs> yeah, he's be, hoping to just deal with great. that bullshit. Yeah. It'd be mm-hmm. great if Belichick hands it over to his son over McDaniel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> He's got a better tongue action, dude. I mean, I don't know. Uh, what do you want from the guy? Hey, All right. With that game, man. So I, I was here. Uh, it was on FS1 today. So Nick, Nick Folk was drafted during the Bush, uh, Bush administration. Okay. Yeah, he's old. The last field goal he's, he, he made for the Bucks a long time. The last ago. field goal he made that, that that was that long was during the Obama administration. And Belichick chose to do that when every team yesterday. Did you watch Red Zone during the day? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you saw all those teams going for it on fourth down. The smartest yep. coach in the history of the league doesn't. That made no. Yeah. Did anyone? That was the that biggest maybe? question was, of the game. I, I mean, in Belichick's defense, that he did have the distance on the kick. No, it just but, barely drifted left and hit but, the upright. Like he had, dude, if he, he could if he, from that distance. If he makes that, yeah, he had the distance. But if he makes that kick, they're giving 
they're still giving Brady another 49 yeah. or whatever 50 seconds, seconds left, left to go two score. Timeouts. And how many times has he done that in that stadium, dude? So it just – Bill Belichick almost – it was weird. I was like, man, that's a really odd call. Like, you yeah. know, and it, it was almost like he didn't think – it was like that he thought they thought or uh, that they were going to call a timeout when they lined up to kick it to yeah. try to like freeze him and they never did it. And then when it I mean, snapped, I was like, what the hell is going on? I wonder if that was part of Belichick's uh, Belichick will never elaborate on this, but maybe that was part of Belichick's thinking like, we'll line up for a field goal and make them burn the timeout. Exactly. And then maybe, then maybe still kick the field goal, but at least they've burned the timeout trying to That's ice. what I thought it was. Didn't, maybe yeah, it didn't work I'm, how he thought. How he yeah, thought it through. Because when they rushed and stepped it, I was like, that that was weird, man. It Bill's kind of always been that way, though, that w- if a Patriots team's going to be same, good, they have to have a good kicker. But this is the yeah. same coach that – You know, what, like good Gostkowski years. Like, I get it, but Bill is not like a super no, but hyper-aggressive played, coach compared played, to a okay, lot I get, of coaches in the league. But he played He doesn't Peyton, care about the Saber metrics. You he know, played like, Peyton Manning on a fucking Sunday night game in Indianapolis in like 07 or 09 or whatever To avoid giving Peyton and the ball back. And went for right. it on, on his own 38 and went for it to avoid giving the ball back. And th- so you don't think he puts – Tom up there with Peyton Manning. It's like, dude, it's the same idea. And he wouldn't go for it on their side of it. Why not? It just to put your kicker in that weather. We knew it was shitty weather all night, too. The chances of that kick going in, dude. We all I think that was he knew that was their only shot of winning. I was that was that was the only way, like, you know, it wasn't. I mean, what would what would be the difference if like it was a 47 yard kick instead of a 55 yard kick? You know, like they get that if they get that fourth and three. Then they're on the right. They were they were down to the thirty seven yard line. But then, then you make the, the then you can run the clock down at least, and you don't give Brady back the ball if you do make the kick. Like, Honestly, it, it was a weird was game for weird. the Patriots. It was I weird. Mean, that they you didn't... think about you know New England ran the ball eight times the whole game. Yeah, they had yeah, negative, not, it was negative yardage game. every time. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, eight for minus one. It's like, yeah. but again, so that was just. It, it is weird to see them get out of their kind of what you know you would think Bill's known for. Belichick wanting to give Brady the ball back with any time. Like, you know, it was just – that was weird, man. I thought that was a really bad, dumb, weird decision. Yeah, I was ha- – I mean, as a Bucks fan, Brady I was happy had- that they lined up to when kick they, the field goal. When they kicked it, I guarantee – I would have yeah. been too as a Bucks fan. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, oh, thank God. All right, we're going to get the ball. They're not going to make it anyway. I knew that – dude, Nick Folk isn't – Vinatieri, you know that's tough conditions, man. Given the pressure and all that shit, and like you said, he it just ran. missed it. He, he just missed it, it, but you know, if he, you know, what is he saying, Mighty Ducks? I mean, a half inch the other way, and you would have missed completely. And it's like true, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have even hit it. So, yeah, I, I, was, I think coaches put a lot of stock to, and you know, if he was killing it from let's say fifty six all pregame he in had, the rain, you know what I mean. Like I like said, the Bill's last time that he made a that, kick, though. Obama was president from that distance. So it, it didn't – the but, decision really you know, had the, no validity behind it. It didn't make any sense. If he's out there drilling them in pregame, why is Bill not going to yeah. go to that decision? If, he's, if the pregame kicks lead you to the decision that Nick Folk is good from 60 yards and in, and then, you you know, you say we like, got – Like Bill's not doing yards, that for no reason is my but, point. But then that's where I would come in with the clock thing, and why do you want to give Brady 50 seconds? Why not just go for the win? Well, and, I mean, you know. but the Bucks were struggling to move the ball all night, man. You're like, right. It was, no, it's, I mean, that's fair. That Brady was going to But it's fucking done, Tom Brady, little. man. Last night he had his uh, – he threw 22 10-plus yard passes in total, and that was his fifth most uh, t- uh, in his entire career. Uh, 10 like, most. we're not talking about completions we're just talking no, about downfield passes for 10 or more yards yeah attempts 22 yeah. attempts yeah. i wonder what his completion and percentage so was because i bet it wasn't good no it could i mean it could yeah but it was again it was like they had him but it's tom fucking brady dude you don't want to give him the ball with some time left and they would have given the ball there at the fucking you know that the game even mad yeah it was just weird man i don't know yeah weird ah. decision by the best well, coach ever. I'm glad the Bucks pulled it out. I still, I have my concerns about the Bucks going forward. Um, they do have an upcoming schedule that's really easy. The next three weeks is Dolphins, Eagles, and Bears. 
So th- those aren't three teams that can really expose your secondary, but they have guys pl- out there in the secondary on defense that I don't know the names of. And I'm, you know, I'm a diehard Bucks fan. When yeah. when the special teamers get out there and those are two of our three corners on a third down play, that's not a good sign if I don't even know who's who number fucking uh, 38 is. You know, it's not a good yeah. sign. Who would have thought Matthew Slater or whatever would have been the player to fuck to, like, change the game with a dumb penalty last night, too, on that. That's that Patriots special teams guy, yeah. right? Matthew Slater. He was yeah. out of bounds, and he yeah, forced the was, fumble after yeah, running, yeah. keeping himself out that of bounds was, for too you long. You could tell he knew he fucked him too, man. That was a big, that was a yeah. turning point right there. There was a down. I got points after that. There was another one where the uh, Patriots kept the Bucks on the field with twelve men on the field, and Belichick looked like he was about to fucking murder somebody. They call a timeout right there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Belichick yeah, looks they, around, is looking at the coaches, yeah. like, "What do we do?" And then finally, he's like, "Time out," and then yeah. turns back around. Well, he like, caught he that one. He caught the one you're talking about where they got the timeout. There was another one where they did not get the timeout oh, okay. and actually yeah. got the 12 men on the field called. That might have been. He might have been pissed enough to take a timeout on the second one after getting burned. Yeah, he didn't want men on the it, field yeah. the first time. But yeah, so the Bucks pulled it out. I. I mean, you guys are going to be surprised when I say this, but after, like, considering the injuries the Bucks are dealing with, if I'm ranking my top three NFC teams right now, I have Packers, Cowboys, and Cardinals as my top three teams in the NFC. In that is order. There any, is there any – yeah, in that order. Is there any disagreements there? Uh, I – I would debate Cardinals and Packers. I would I would put the Cardinals after that big win right there with I would put them up there with the best of Yeah. I think they could beat the Cowboys for sure. I think they could compete with them. And I definitely think them and the Packers would be first of all be an awesome game to watch. But um but yeah, I think I but other than that, I think those are the top I think that's the class of the NFC. I agree. Right I think now. at the moment, I yeah. think as Tampa I think gets time, healthy again, Brady exactly you know. Tampa's yeah. kind of, as we saw, they had a bit of a run game last night. Um, you know, I think as they get healthy, they could be, they'll reemerge again. Yeah, they got 13 weeks. They got 13 weeks. They're going to get a lot of that secondary back. None of them have been declared out for the season yet. So I just, I don't know how good the Packers are yet. I know it's Rodgers, right. Devontae. Agree, it's yeah. just, it seems like sometimes with the play calling up there, it's like they almost take it out of his hands and, you know, yeah, like it's like, why wait to the fourth quarter to let him get aggressive sometimes kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But we're nitpicking there. These yeah. are all super okay. Bowl yeah. I was just I was just curious there. I wanted to throw that out there because I'm, I'm kind of putting the books on notice right now. I haven't seen I haven't well, seen what, what I saw Rams? last year in the playoffs. Yeah, I, mean, I know is- the Rams are uh, the Rams are right up there in the top five. That would round out the top five. Right. We have Packers, Cowboys, Cardinals. And then the next two teams would be the Bucks and the Rams. Yeah. Have to be those next two. Not your Vikings? Oh, uh, the Vikings, you know, I would have them in it. You guys are pretty six. high on them last right. week there, man. Those Vikings. Give them a couple more weeks. They'll be- <laughs> those Vikings, they're tough. Yes. You guys. Uh- <laughs> yeah, that was fucked up because, yeah, the Vikings were one of my underdog picks of the week. Yeah, and- I remember. Um, it didn't go well. They scored the first red zone touchdown, I believe. It was Justin Jefferson had yeah. the first touchdown on Sunday. They we never scored. A, they that. never scored again. It was their only touchdown. It of the hurt day. him too. That I think Dalvin re aggravated his ankle because oh, he didn't even he didn't even play in the second half. Really, I didn't so, even notice that because that man, game was I never can, fucking well, on the red zone. And, and Madison looks identical to Cook, you know, with the dreads and the turf tape. Yeah. So if you just see him for a run, it's like. Yeah, it's the same guy, but yeah, that's a big part to that offense. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's get into our picks. You mentioned, yeah, me and Brad missed on the Vikings last week. We can recap our picks here. Y'all missed hard after talking all sorts of shit. That's what you did, yeah. Brad, yesterday you were three and four on your picks against the spread. Jimmy, you were five and two on your picks against the spread. That's the first week you've won. I was one and six. 
Yeah. Which I was consistent with my picks and how I actually bet on Sunday because I had an awful day of betting. <laughs> well, when you said that, <laughs> I remembered I was like, like oh, it's probably shit. gonna correlate with what we talked about on the pod. I couldn't remember who you had yeah. picked, you know, but I knew so, when I went back and you know, I heard I was like, oh man, they, they, the Browns won. You guys were all over, man. Or yeah, the, the Vikings, Vikings won. I, the Vikings I, one didn't hurt me nearly as bad as the Saints, which we're we're gonna get to real quick. But before we do that, we're gonna do a quarterly recap just on everybody's record for the yeah, season on right. picks. Well, why we gotta do that? Can we just talk about last week for a minute? It was a big week, Brad. Me, all right? I mean, now, Jimmy, was, you hey. won a week. You were one and six the week before. I'm, I'm just steady hey, what, over here. We're week. like three and four every week. I feel like yeah, me. yeah. Brad mean. has been con- kind of consistently <laughs> like average, and then <laughs> it's Jimmy is like a fucking oh, it, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but on the season, Brad, you are fifteen and twenty. 15 winning bets, 20 losses. Jimmy, you are 14, 20, and one push. Oh, I'll take it. I am also 14, 20, and one push. Because we what? both pushed on We're the tight. same game. It was a wow. Panthers game week one. Jimmy, we both pushed on. We're all within – we all have the same amount of losses. We're basically a half game – separates Man, all that's of That's a good one, though. That's pretty right. crazy. Yeah, yeah, so we can keep right track there. of this. Literally yeah. one pick. Yeah. Well, it's weird because I think I went one and six last week, and then so then this week I went one and six, and it flipped. flipped. Yeah, Yeah. dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yep. So we'll keep track of that. We'll we'll give another recap of like the total record on the season after like week nine, right? At the halfway mark this year. Sounds good. And uh, let's move on to you know some of the other Sunday games. Let's start with what I thought was the most entertaining noon game: the Saints and Giants. The Saints choked this one away. This is the one that <laughs> killed all of my bets on Sunday. I lost <laughs> like this five the different of the bets. Here. I lost like five different bets <laughs> that were tied to the Saints. So, Bradley's Winston. Yeah, Jameis. It, it wasn't Jameis this time. Do you it want wasn't to divulge him. these bets that didn't hit? Yeah, I, yeah, I can. If yeah, it would be worth it. Yeah, I flip right over. Here's my betting card. Okay, first bet of the day. This is the first bet I play. I'm writing these as I place the bets, Brad, on Sundays, all right? Okay. Yeah, me and Jimmy already went through this. I hate to have to do it again, but it's for it's for the people, right? For so me. first first people bet. People want to know. First bet is money line parlay, Cowboys, Saints, Chiefs. The Saints ruined that one. Second one, five team money team money line parlay, Bucks, Packers, Chiefs. Cowboys, Saints. The Saints lose that one. Trend. Okay. Yep. Yep. That was plus 400. That was some big, that was the big bet I expected to hit yesterday. Third one Vikings plus seven. That was a push at least. Saints minus one. Chiefs minus one. That was a teaser bet. Saints blew it. Last one on the bet slip here. I have Chiefs, Packers, Bucks. Saints, 49ers. Saints were the first to ruin that bet as well. So, yeah, that's just some you betting really advice. That well. Yeah, do not put all your eggs in one well, basket and you that's know, another one, on all man. these parlays. Just no, don't do it. Not I was super confident them. first game back in New Orleans after the hurricane. Yeah. The Giants were down two of their top three receivers. Darius Slayton was out. Sterling Shepard was out. I thought the Saints defense at home, their first real home game, would come out and shut them down, and I was just – I was overly confident in it, and fucking Danny Dimes bit me in the ass. And I lost all my bets yesterday. Yeah, has he become, like, fantasy relevant? Like, I mean, did he have – I think he's actually passing? good. Are, yeah, like, not just fantasy run? good. I think can Danny run. Dimes is he actually kind of good. Kinda, I yeah, agree. Man. When they let him run, too, it seems to really – Barkley had a big the game. Confidence. Uh, yeah, had Galladay had a big game. Between so. fucking Barkley and Cordell Patterson, he had five touchdowns. I don't you know, know if that's happened ever with those. I mean, yeah, dude. So um, the best day of uh, Patterson's career. Yeah. I mean, the, the Saints had this we had in the hand. Other one, we talked they about really it. did. 
last yeah. week, and you guys were both on the Niners, I think, over the Seahawks. You had said that I that, was, yeah, yeah, and I, dude, I think they showed. I mean, again, yeah. they got hurt, but I mean, their Hall of Fame quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Got yeah, hurt. right. Well, yeah, that idiot. You guys love him. I'm like, dude, <laughs> he's not good. He's always getting hurt, and he did it again. And I, I can't trust the Seahawks. Yeah. I just love going I against the Seahawks. I mean, I can't but trust can the you Seahawks. trust the Niners though, dude? I mean, come on, like I, I can't. So, not right now. No, you no, can't. No, man. They're no, they said nothing that yeah. you should. But just my, my well, favorite this, thing. If, go ahead, Brad. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say on this Saints Giants game, has Sean Payton ruined your boy Jameis? Well, I think he's he gone a little bit too no far. Risks. He's gone yeah. too far with it, man. You gotta limit Jameis and keep him <laughs> a little bit composed, but you can't do this like we're gonna run every first down and second down for three or four yards, end up in third and three. That's not the way to go. They need to they need to throw more on first down because um, some of those deep shots, Jameis has been hitting them. One of them got called yeah. back from a holding penalty yesterday. He threw a sixty yard bomb to, um, I think it was Deontay Harris or Callaway that okay. got called back. It was a t- it was a long touchdown that got called back by a holding penalty. But I mean the. The funniest thing I saw from this game, what I honestly eased the pain of me losing about a hundred dollars from the Saints losing, was uh, Jabril Peppers comes out for that coin toss going into overtime. Did either of you guys see this? That was awesome. He goes, he goes, I'm on heads and I'm confident. And then the ref <laughs> ref flips the coin, out, no helmet head. on, just like <laughs> yeah, well, the coin lands heads and. Um, <laughs> Jabril Peppers goes boom, and he's not. We want like the ball standing. and yeah. fuck him, fuck him. <laughs> no <laughs> way. And, and the actual no. Mike's actually caught it where you could hear it <laughs> yeah. loud. And the dude was so excited. Yeah. And sure enough, the Giants get the ball and go down and score yeah, a touchdown. And scored and won yeah. it, dude. But yeah, that was like the dope, that was man. one thing that like eased the pain for me was how funny that <laughs> dude was <laughs> during the really coin good, toss. Dude. We want the ball and he was fuck him. Good. Yeah. <laughs> And he's not even like I got to look that up. Yeah. That's good shit, it's a, dude. He's I have like not standing seen that. Kind of like if you can picture it, like the other guy's standing at midfield. The refs are all It was Malcolm line. Jenkins, yeah. Yeah, and he oh, is already nice. like walking away and like wait for the calls. Like, we'll take the – like he's behind all the refs. He's just like doing whatever the fuck he wanted. <laughs> I got to look that up. That's <laughs> It was – it was is that like him coming out? Where did he go, Michigan or some shit? Yes. Like he went, yeah, yeah, he was, he was a first he won a Heisman, pick. right? Uh, no, he didn't win a Heisman. He a I think but he yeah. went to it, though. Yeah, yeah, he was like a, a runner-up. Like, he was a candidate for he it. He got to sit in the front row and watch him make their yeah, speech. Yeah, he had all the fucking – he would return kicks and all that shit. He yep. was dope, man, but no yeah. one knew how to – he went to – he got drafted by Cleveland. No one mm-hmm. knew how to use yep. him, right? Yeah, man. Yep. Yep. All right, so that was the best noon game. Moving on to the afternoon game, the Cardinals with a huge statement win against the Rams. Ran the ball for 200 yards. I thought the Sony Michelle fumble was kind of a turning point. It let the Cardinals build a big early lead. It was a yeah. Sony Michelle fumble that led to a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Early uh, on. I mean, I was impressed, dude, especially after how good the Rams looked against the Bucks a couple weeks ago to see the Cardinals like have a convincing win against yeah. the Rams. On the road, too, was impressive, man. Okay, I, I, we talked about it again. That was why I was so high on uh fucking Hopkins going into the year because it's like, man, they've had a couple years to get going, and Kyler's doing his thing, man. And we didn't know how he'd go up against that rush. He seemed to handle it fine. He was getting out just like he normally would. And their defense, man, their defense showed up and made plays too. So that yep. was, I think, that was a big thing that people didn't really see coming. People are thinking, you know, it's. McVay and Stafford and they have Cooper cut. They're doing all this crazy coming up with routes on the fly and all that shit. And I thought it was a really dude, a good win for Kyler, man. And I think he's for, I think they, it was a way to kind of say to the NFL, like, yo, we're here. Like it was what the Broncos, I <laughs> will get into that, but we didn't have a chance, but I wish it would have, but it was their way to say to the NFL, like, we're not fucking around. Like we're going to come in and win on the road and, you know, yeah, I thought they had lost good. their last eight against the yeah. Rams. This yeah, is probably the best team victory of the point. year for the Cardinals. You know, because yeah. Ky- Kyler was good, but this was kind of the least they asked him to do yet. Mm-hmm. You know, like they kind of yeah, after the um, after, like after that fumble you brought up, 
basically Arizona cranked off on like 17 straight and it, you could tell it just like freaked the Rams out. They kind of gave up running the ball and the fact that the Cardinals didn't even have a single sack and still held the Rams that Cooper cup Stafford connection, everybody's talking about in check. Right. I, I think yeah. it, that says a lot going for like, you know, forward, like shit. Okay. Well, it, you kind of, everybody in the NFL is looking at you as one of the best right now. And yeah. one of Matt's, I remember you brought up Robert Woods last week, not knowing if we like, they'd be able to cover him. And yeah. it, it's like, dude, we didn't even hear really. I don't know what his line looked like. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly either, but the Cardinals, they yeah. have some players in the secondary that I'm unaware of yet that are. Yeah. Yeah. That are making players. plays though, yeah. man. And what's that show, Ted Lasso? It's like the, the, the coach. <laughs> yeah. So, did you see what Kingsbury or the, um, the, what's the Cardinals coach? Cliff Kingsbury. Kingsbury, Kingsbury yep. yeah. yeah. After the game, he's they're like, well, so what do you do tonight or whatever after this a big win like this? He's like, I don't know, probably go home, have a, whatever, a drink, and uh, watch some Ted Lasso. He's one of the greatest coaches <laughs> around, you know, and I thought that was pretty cool, man. He was, like, humble. He's making but, jokes about yeah, it. Yeah, he was just able to, like, kind of – right, man. Yeah. But at the same time, dude, that was a huge win for them, dude, and I like that he could play it off like, yeah, we haven't done shit yet, man. And I think, it, you know – DeAndre Hopkins gets it too, which AJ I don't want to get. I don't want to get first time in like years had a good game. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. he looked. And I don't want to get too far into it, but Brad, we said during we're like was, and it all comes down to money. But the David Johnson for DeAndre Hopkins trade is going to go down oh as God. maybe one of the worst. It's like, dude, yeah. the Texans had a bunch of bad trades like that, though. That's they why they one, are. Dude, uh, that went, one, their trade for aging running really back for too. like a. Fucking, you're just trying to sell tickets by getting them running back. The people know, like, that's just terrible, dude. But yeah, but yeah. DeAndre wanted out. Yeah, and they weren't going to pay him because I thought it was impressive right. It that was they won, and DeAndre was not 100. percent He was almost a decoy a lot of that game. You know, we saw AJ Green, like yeah. Rondale Moore, like Kirk. All these other guys are kind of stepping mm-hmm. up while he's they a little banged it. up. And it's, it's almost an frightening to think That's like I thought he, the Rams were like, right. even their yeah. tight end Max Williams is getting into it. So it's like when mm-hmm. Hopkins is right again with that yeah. running game, who's gonna stop them? They have a crazy amount of weapons, and most of them are you know real young guys that you you know because you are guys just bring this onto the scene. Up. Yeah. I know we're running out, you know, we got we're running out of time, but yeah. it's um but James Conner had I got him on my fantasy team, obviously on the bench. He in non nice. uh PP or non PPR leagues just standing two right touchdowns here, yesterday. Two touchdowns, him, right? and it's yeah. like so you can see they're winning against a really good what we what's supposed to be a really good team, and they're yeah. scoring touchdowns on the they're not like you said, they don't have DeAndre even. They're they're winning games in a way that you have to win in the playoffs type shit, making turnovers and stuff. So I exactly, yeah. I mean, they it's ran always the good ball. to see Cronky lose there. Oh, too. and they <laughs> ran like the that. ball down their throat. I mean, forty times for two hundred fifteen, two touchdowns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. what, Mister Aaron Donald? Like, wh- where were you this whole game? Yep. Well, the Rams. I think that's the weak spot of the Rams defense, though. Is that line? They have no names at linebacker. That's so if you level. can, if you can just block up the front line, yeah, and, like double team Donald, and back, give your running back the ball, let him get to that second level. They don't really have a, you know, they don't have a Bobby Wagner that, or a Levante David no. that can clean up anything that gets through the D line. Yeah, like not a even like in the middle back there because yeah. that's where um. A lot of the guys fish are drafted and they're starting to fade out now, but Donald mm-hmm. is one of them. He, he is what made that D able to make McVay's offense uh, good when he first got there. Cause there were still those like staple guys there. Like you had Robert yeah. Quinn or whoever originally, and they yep. were like still good yep. players. And, and once that's gone and even the O line, they had that one dude that was here, Brad, I can't think of his name, Havenstein or some shit. And like, um, yeah, or, he's still there. He's yeah, still there. so one of those, dude, a couple still of those, right dudes tackle. Are, yep. but that's all. It's all Fisher's built dudes that moved there when the Rams moved out there, and and so yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I think we, when McVay keeps drafting, the defense is getting a little. It's more signed guys like uh Ram uh like Ramsey and shit, and not so yeah. many. Yeah, we mentioned how bad that how bad that DeAndre Hopkins David Johnson trade was, and started brought up the Texans for a bit. Let's start a petition to move the Houston Texans 
Back to St. Louis. St. Louis, baby. We'll call yeah. them like the St. Louis freaking catfish or something. Well, Who the hell yeah, cares? Dude, <laughs> give St. <laughs> Louis a football I'd team back. <laughs> dude, no, but they'd move them to fucking Oakland in like four years or some shit. We'd win a Super yeah. Bowl with them here, and then they'd be uh, in fucking 2040. They'd be moving to like. Yeah, that's- I don't think uh, the NFL's bringing a team here while we have a billion dollar lawsuit, lawsuit against the against Supreme them. Court. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that'll do for relationships, but yeah. we got the battle. Yeah, hogs, we baby. might want to invest in the XFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's our play. All right. Definitely. Well, you know, Jimmy, this is uh, this is a blessing in disguise because we kind of ran out of time to talk Ravens Broncos. All right, real quick. It was. It sucked. It sucked. My quarterback. The well, we quarterback can just. Got hurt. We can just you start the next. Brad was right. They beat us. Two no, no, it. no. There's not much to talk about. They didn't they do diddly lost. poo offensively. And it wasn't. We didn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't throw a pat. We couldn't get a first down. We stunk. That yep. sucked. That was pitiful. Coach, why I, are you in such a bad mood? What's it to you? If you were if you were two and two seven, and seven you'd be in a, be bad, a bad mood bad too. too. Next, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you guys? I mean, Brad, you're quick thought. What do you think yeah. about Fangio about the record? Oh, okay. let's get into that when we get yeah. back, just for a yeah. second. Okay, about okay. All right, yeah, All right. Yeah. let's take I'm a quick cool break. That. We will talk Sounds to good. Fangio, getting I'm a little bit pissy about the Ravens going for that consecutive games with 100 rushing yards or more. We'll uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll get back to it. Because that is a funny oh, topic. I don't yeah. want to. Oh, yeah. Well, they know they're playing one of the best teams <laughs> in the league, so they got to show them. I mean, might exactly. as well win something. We'll be, we'll be right. Win the division. Yep. You just hold your You time. got it. 